there. Just go outside, pick up a stick, throw a stick, break a stick. I mean, touch a tree, look at the oh. flowers, you know, talk to them about colors and how things may have been created. Let kids play podcast. <laughs> Hi, welcome to another episode of Let Kids Play Podcast. I'm your host, Nayetta, the mom playologist, and I have a special guest here with me today. I have Christina, the wellness coach. Hello. I'm excited. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, Christina. Sure. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm super yeah. honored and excited. <laughs> um, it's always fun to have fellow, you know, mom chats, you know, talk to other moms mm -hmm. that can relate to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm actually a mom of three. I live in Tampa, Florida now, originally from New York. I moved here three years ago okay. um, just for a life change after my mom passed away. And, you know, we were very, very close and we were neighbors and I was looking for a change. So I was like, you know what? I visited my brother and I fell in love. So I moved here. Um, I've been a wellness coach for four years now, which is absolutely right. amazing because that wasn't the exact path I thought I was going to be on. I went to school for nursing. I became a nurse, um, but I kind of pivoted towards uh, more emotional and physical health. So I've been doing that for four years. I do group coaching, one-to-one -one coaching, and I just overall love to serve and I love to help um, women just prioritize their health. So that's what I do. Okay, so what was the, um, what created first uh, condolences for your mom? Um, thank you, thank you. Passing. Especially you were neighbors, like that had to be so cool. So one live next to your mom and then right, two yeah. grandkids. Um, I don't yeah. know how old they were when she passed, but yes. um, that, that I'm glad you got to experience that while she was here. Yes, um, yes. So is that kind of... Um, is that kind of what got you um, into the career path of the wellness and emotional and physical side of the nursing or it helped altogether? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was always fairly, you know, active, like I was an athlete in high school, you know, I played basketball, stuff like that. I wasn't like into it as far as like a lifestyle, but I was active. Um, but more so in 2019, I was going through a divorce. And mm -hmm. I just kind of lost myself in the divorce It was a very messy ending of a divorce. And I was alone, I was home with the kids. I've been a stay at home mom for 12 years. So I've never physically went to work. Um, mm -hmm. So I just kind of found myself in a huge rut. So I remember November of 2019, um, my mom was sick again. And again, like I said, we were neighbors. So she wasn't able to help with the kids a lot, be around a lot. And I just remember looking in the mirror and I was like, Christina, what are you doing? Like you are completely like going in a black hole. So um, I remember talking to her about it because, you know, she was my bestie. I talked to her about, you know, my body, things, how I felt. And she invested in me. She gave me, I think, like $200. And she's like, hey, go get these, you know, protein shakes, products, all these things. Like, you know what to do. Get yourself together. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I was like, what will happen if I just don't give up this time yeah. so yeah November 2019 I'll never forget I looked in the mirror I said that and then five months later I lost 40 pounds like really oh, quick wow. like the weight was like waiting to come off yeah and I started just you know sharing it on social media very authentically because I was always on social media and people kept asking me what I was doing. Um, so I started sharing what I was doing. And that's how I became a wellness coach in that manner. Um, I just started working with people. People um, know me for my hit classes. I have a 25 minute hit class free every single okay. month virtually. So okay. people join that. Yeah, they love it. Um, they, they leave their feeling like they're going to die in a good way. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I got really well known for that. And then, you know, obviously the pandemic happened March of 2020. So everything was shut down. Um, I had just opened a brick and mortar as well. And I Ooh. couldn't work anymore. So I was just online sharing my journey, continuing working out. So that's how kind of how it picked up because we were locked in and I was sharing and people were asking what I was doing. And that's how I became a wellness coach. And then the rest was history. I love it. I love it. So how old were your kids or how old are your kids now? And then how old were they when your mom passed? Yeah. So my kids now, my son is 12 and my two girls are seven, almost seven and eight years old. So this was four years ago. So my kids were really young. My son was about six years old. So it's so weird. Almost turning seven. It's so weird to even say that her anniversary is June of this year, June 4th. So they were very, very close to my mom. Um, obviously, I was too. And we were neighbors. We lived across the street from each other. I purposely bought a house so I could be like close to my mom yeah. uh, in Long Island, New York. So it was very hard on me. And it was hard for the kids too. Um, so I always, you know, tell people, 
getting in that routine of having healthy habits literally saved my life. Like oh. <laughs> literally, because um, I didn't know that, you know, what I was doing, obviously I was trying to get healthier and getting a better mind frame from the divorce and everything that was going on with my mom. But I just didn't know how effective it was going to be after I lost her. So when I, you know, when she passed away, of course, I was still, you know, in those healthy habits and that happened. And of course I was laid out for at least like a good three weeks. I couldn't do anything. I didn't want to move. I had to have a babysitter come in and help with my kids. Like I literally couldn't do anything. And I remember it was the summer and I remember getting up and I was like, you know what? I feel like working out. And I went, I went outside. It was the summer in New York and I was working out and I was posting as usual. And people yeah. thought I was crazy. They were like, are you okay? Like you just lost your mom. Like maybe you should like take it easy. I was like, absolutely not. Like this is helping my mental. I feel good. Like, yes, I'm crying through some of my workouts, but this is better than what I used to do in my past. You know, in my past, you don't know, you don't want to know what I used to do to cope with, you know, grief and different things or, you know, uh, losses. So it really changed my life and it helped having those healthy habits in place save my life in a manner of my mindset, my physical health, my emotional health, and my parenting. Um, like I said, I've been a stay-at-home mom for 12 years. I've always been home with my kids. I always, you know, that's why I was attracted to you, like how you um, implement the play and everything that you do with your kids. Yeah. So those things I was doing with my kids without having like a name to it. And yeah. I felt so bad not being the mom that I wanted to be during that time when I lost my mom. So having those healthy habits creating that atmosphere um, and that community literally changed everything for me. So I don't know where I would have been if I didn't start, you know, when I did five months before that. Yeah, it, it sounds like, it, especially um, if you were a playful mom and you were very engaged and I'm sure that was hard for your little ones to yeah. see, but at the same time, like you're dealing with the loss of your mom and they're kind of losing their mom on the emotional aspect. So right. it was, oh, yeah, it woke me up totally. Like, I just remember, you know, at that time, again, my kids were really small. My youngest, let's see, she's going to be seven. So she was about three at that time. Like, she was a baby. She yeah. had no idea what was going on at the time. So when I went outside, you know, I took them with me. I was like, listen, play outside. Mommy's going to work out. I'm going to blast some music. I mean, I have videos. Like, they were working out with me. Like, it really uplifted our spirits. And it just made me feel like, okay, we can go on. We can move forward. We're going to be sad. We're going to have moments, but there is life to live. So it was it was a beautiful blessing, you know, in disguise to have that in place. I I, I love that. I love yeah. that because it, it kind of, you said it kind of uh, boosted your spirits. It sounded like it was a whole change in the house, like your whole house shifted after you 100%. made that one decision to get yourself together. Um, yeah. which is, it's hard because you you lost your best friend and your yeah. mom. You know, those are two usually two different people, and right. you have that and a neighbor, and you have that all in one. So right. that, that's that's tough. So working, yeah. so the healthy habits and working out kind of helped you through that grief, so that your kids could get their mom back, and you yeah. you can uplift your spirits. Yeah, um, exactly. What was the first thing that you did with your kids? Because I know um, they were little and you were hands on. So what was the yeah. first thing you remember doing with them as far as um, getting back to being that playful and engaging mom for them? Yeah. So I just remember going outside. <laughs> like I just remember wanting to be outside. It was June again. So in New York, you know, we had season. Now we're in Florida. We're outside every single day. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, in New York, you know, we had seasons. So sometimes it was too cold. It was too, you know, whatever. But now I even encourage people, even if you live in a state where there are seasons, bundle up and take those kids outside. Like there are so many benefits to the kids, just seeing the trees, feeling the air, touching the snow, you know, being outside, walking like it was it's it doesn't matter where you are. But the, the first thing I do remember is just taking them outside in the backyard. We had a really nice backyard and we would just run back and forth. <laughs> and I would race them. <laughs> and I would race them back. They were really small, falling all over the place. And yeah. it was so fun for them. But to me, I was exercising. But I was like, you know what? We're going to get this exercise in and we're going to have fun. And they were tiring me out. So every day they would like, hey, mom, let's go outside and run. I'm like, uh, I don't want to. But they were motivating me yeah. and I would do yeah. it. And that became our routine. So we did a lot of that um, walking. We went to the park a lot. Um, I tried to get them off devices. Like I'm not against device or anything like that. Like my kids have their screen time, but I just wanted to be in a place where I felt like whatever I did was uplifting my spirit and whatever I did can help them as well to see like, hey, in the future, if this ever happens, if you're ever down, 
I remember mommy going outside. I remember mommy playing yep. with us. I remember mommy, you know, even though she was maybe, you know, not in the best mood, like she would work out, she would play with us. She would even watch us outside, whatever the case may be. I just remember, I, I just want them to remember that you can do something to uplift yourself. So yeah, yep. that's what I remember. We were outside all summer long. <laughs> go, go outside. I tell go people outside. that all the time and I'm not against screen time either. Um, all of my kids have their different devices. Yeah. They have TVs and things like that. Yeah. But it's it's about the balance of it. And nature heals. Like nature oh heals. Yes. Let let the kids take their shoes off and run in the backyard. Like, yes, let them it, get messy. I used to hate. I used to be like, oh no, don't dirty your clothes. What? Now they got tear it up because we got washing machines. You know, we we have the blessing and benefits of cleaning ourselves up. And what is a little mess versus fun? Like. I just stopped being so critical about it. And I was like, you know what? If they're having fun making that mess, even chalk time. Like, I remember we used to take chalk and, like, wet it. And that would be kind of like painting yeah. for them. Um, so, yeah, it, it was it was definitely very healing and fun to do that. I love that. What helps, um, what helps me? Because I love that you all get outside and then you're very active. We love walking. Um, we have a trail in our neighborhood, so we love yes. walking on the trail. But what really clicked for um, for me, my son, my little one loves the mud, like oh loves the mud. <laughs> and I, I usually don't. I'll, I'll play with them, but when it comes yeah. to the mud, I'm usually just watching. Yeah. But one day, I just decided to let me let me try this mud, and it was just so healing. Like something came yes. over my spirit, and I was like, oh my god. Gosh, like this is why he comes down when he's in the mud. It was yep. so relaxing. Playing with the sticks, the dirt, the bugs, yes. all that. Yeah. Like it's so parents try it because yes. it's it sounds like the wellness coach is telling us there's some healing Listen, with that. <laughs> Listen, it's a it's a free free game, right? Yep. They see things in their minds that we don't even see, you know. Like they may look at a flower and they see a face, like stuff like that, you know. I started to learn through them again. And I was like, I started to see the world a little differently. So that's why I encourage encourage moms even though they may be going through a tough time it could be a divorce it could be a loss it could be something personal it could be a job whatever the case may be if you look into your children they're actually very mm -hmm. healing you know god gave you those children for a reason so oh, there could be something amazing. there yeah you know they're, conversation they're, and play I I love that you said they're very human because sometimes we feel like we treat our kids like robots. Like you said, you can't get dirty. Don't get messy. Like yeah. they take baths. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Exactly. They don't know nothing. They just want to play. Like they literally just want to play and have fun. And I get it. Like, of course you need structure and boundaries, but I think if we just give ourselves the wiggle room of not being so strict, like even we will have more fun, you know, like yep. I started being a child again recently. Like I was telling my friend, like, I have two girls and I stopped doing my nails because it was so expensive. I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to do my nails, you know, another time or I'll just, I'll, I always get pedicures, but I didn't paint my nails. And my uh, eight year old, she's obsessed with nails. Now she has like these fake nails. She's putting them on, she's painting them, all that stuff. And I was like, yo, why am I not doing this? Like I can paint my nails. Like I can, you know, little things like that. Like you just start to forget. So now we have nail parties. Like every Friday, we just paint our nails, different colors. Like it's just, so cute. So these kids, man, I'm telling you. I love it. I love it. I stopped getting my nails done as well. One, I just don't have time to sit in there for that, that long. Yeah. And then two, the price is just going up and up and up. Like It's crazy. A full no. set now is like $75. No lie. Like, it's crazy. And you know, nothing. I mean, I will do it sometime, but definitely always a pedicure. But my nails, I'm good. I can paint my yeah. own nails. And I'm having fun with learning different things too, you know, so... Yes. Yeah. My daughter, um, she she has been into nails <laughs> probably coming out of the womb. She is this, <laughs> she is my princess. Um yeah. so now she's seven, she does designs when yeah. she does her um toes and Dang. stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, if they lived any closer, they would love that. Oh my gosh. She she's very creative. Like she has a little nail dryer and all that Dang. stuff. I, it's about so weird. I was like, I don't think I was that creative at seven. I don't even think no. I knew how to paint my nails at seven. <laughs> But it comes from play. It comes yes. from play. Yes. So um, going back to what you were saying, like becoming a kid again, like that's literally, literally play is what helped me through um, me and my husband was separated, trying to figure some things right. out because we've been together forever. Right. Um, we're back together now, but literally oh, playing, I know, praise him. Yes, it's awesome. But literally 
play is what helped me and my kids get through it because yeah. like you my we my, my kids had never been outside the household without their dad being there mm-hmm. seeing him every day mm-hmm. talking to him every single day like they would talk on the phone but it's different from physically oh, yeah. from your dad yeah. and then he's dad so it's like a whole parade when he comes home yes. every day and now they don't have that right. so that was that was tough on me and my spirit but just doing we love to do dance breaks mm-hmm. oh yeah yes. Yes, that's the best. <laughs> yes, that that helps. So now, um, not necessarily saying that you're over grief, um, but now that you're you're in a different season of life, what are some things that helps you every day to maintain your um emotional and physical health? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like you said, you know, you never get over it. It's everybody has grief, you know, and uh processes grief differently. Um, For me, I feel like going into year four, I'm at a place where I want to do everything that my mom would want me to do. Like the first couple Mm -hmm. of years, like it's really painful. You go through all these emotions, but now it's just kind of like a wake up call. It's like, you know what? My mom was a strong black woman. She was a doctor. Um, She was, um, she was so resilient. She was beautiful. She was stylish. She did whatever she wanted to do. And I really wanted to live up to that standard. So Right now um, in my life as a mother, as a woman, I am doing all the things I want to do. I'm going to take, I take salsa classes. um, I dance more. I sing, even though I don't know how to sing. (laughs) I'm doing all of the things and, um, and the healthy habits, I I continue to do. And the the funny thing is the kids have fallen in line. Like this is their life now. Uh, I know that I only started it four years ago, but you know, when they see me working out, they're like, they get out the way. They're either joining me or they work out, you know, like they know it's mommy time. Um, You know, their eating habits have changed. Like we don't, we, before we were, you know, totally fine. Like it wasn't anything drastic, but we don't buy juice. Like we don't, we drink water all the time. Like Mm -hmm. they cook with me, they get to decide their vegetables their meals. So I kind of try to interact, have them interacted in everything that I do so that Mm -hmm. my main thing is I want to raise children to be, um, to have those healthy habits when they get older. Cause I'm not always going to be around. And that was a wake up call for me, obviously losing my mom. I only had her for 31 years. I I expected to have at least 60 something years, you know, and not to say that that's going to happen to me. I don't live in that fear, but I just want them to have those habits. Remember, okay, mommy did this. This is how she cooked. This is how she worked out. This is how she took care of herself. And she had fun. And even though, you know, she's a single mom and she's doing all these things, like she made sure that she took care of herself. Um, I constantly check in with myself. I I am a big journal uh, person. I journal every okay. single day. Yeah, I actually pulled out a journal the other day that was from like 2019. And boy, I didn't even Ooh. recognize who it was who was writing. I was like, what was I going through? Like, it was a whole different person. But it's so beautiful to look back yeah. and see the growth, even in your writing and even in the things that you're talking about and praying about. So I encourage moms to just get into a small routine. Like, it doesn't have to be mm-hmm. drastic. And these things will build you up. Like, yes, the focus is taking care of your kids. And that is a priority but you also have to make yourself a priority so you can be around long enough so you can be emotionally healthy so you can be mentally aware um and so that you can be physically you know fit enough to to chase after them they're so busy (laughs) they have so much going on like it's in i don't even know how we get to keep up but you know like it's just you know those things they they matter and they help and i just encourage every mom to find a little piece of you know peace that they can find during their day for themselves and it will help your parenthood and your motherhood greatly oh my gosh it will so it's it sounds like it's all a physical um thing because you know it's working out but how does it make you feel when you're working out and doing all of that oh my gosh so i um didn't really like working out. <laughs> it was not okay. my thing. You know, again, like I was, you know, into fitness and naturally I played basketball, I played sports like that, but it's the after feeling that I'm after, you know, you know, in the beginning, you don't want to, you drag your feet like, oh, I got to put my timer on. I'm going to work out stuff like that. But it's the after fact, like I did that. I moved my body for 30, 40 minutes. I am, you know, I started to say, I'm just grateful that I get to move my body because, hey, yeah. my mom's not here. No, she doesn't even get to move her body. You know, yeah. so-and-so, you know, some people don't get to do that. So once you kind of change your perspective of I get to do this rather than I have to do this, you're going to get up and go. Sometimes you have to hype yourself up. Sometimes motivation doesn't do the job, but discipline will always meet you halfway if you're consistent. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, just try. I mean, walk for 15 minutes, 
you know, you can do anything, dance for 20 minutes, have fun with it. It does not have to be anything strenuous. Don't do workouts that you don't genuinely enjoy because you're going to dread it. You know, some yeah. people really like running and some people hate cardio. So why would you do, you know, that type of cardio? You don't have to do that. Um, so yeah, I just, I just make sure I have fun with it. That's the whole goal, you know, and then it spills yeah. over to the kids. It spills over to your life. Just make sure that you have fun in everything that you do, whether it's physical fitness, um, emotional self-care, you know, the fun component is important. It is. It is. So you said people were, um, you tell people and people have been like watching you and you, you, and you do the heat classes. So is this what you um, talk about in your program? Yeah. So um, the HIIT classes, I'm well known for that because I started out like when I started working out, I, like showing my workouts. That's my favorite style. So everybody, like I said, to find your favorite style of workout. So yeah. it's just 25 minutes. Um, it's high intensity. You don't need any weights or anything like that. It's basically just doing like a lot of bursts of workouts and smaller breaks and uh -huh. heart rate kind of goes up and, you know, you burn a lot more fat quicker. Um, and that's just my preference. Of course, I can do different workouts, but I just prefer it. I love the feeling of the strength and my how my body feels. Um, so I started to, you know, do just little, you know, and it was like, it was like five people at first that joined and we would work out together on zoom by like 7 PM, like a couple of days a week. And then it grew to like 20, 25, 30, 40 people. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So it's still growing, which I'm excited about. Uh, we didn't do it last month cause I was away. So we are starting it back up, um, in, uh, in May and June. Um, but yeah, the hit style is really, really fun. Uh, we, it's 25 minutes. It's not long at all. We start with the stretch and then we get right into it. Music is playing um, okay. I'm encouraging them I show them the moves I do modified as well so if some people okay. need to slow it down yep it, it's beginner friendly so I don't want anyone to be intimidated it's mostly women mm -hmm. um, but I don't want anyone to be intimidated or feel like oh well I'm not you know in that size or I'm not in you know that fit level we are all different levels so I do the modifications show them the moves and then we get at it and it's it goes by so quick and it's so fun and afterwards you feel like you can do anything you feel like you can lift the house <laughs> everyone always tells me that I'm like yes mission accomplished <laughs> i love that i love that so are the women so it's a free um the hit yeah. class is free once a month yeah. um how your program is uplift her so yeah. how so how is it different yeah i'm sorry uplifter is different yep Okay, how is it different? Can you break yeah. that down for us? Sure. So Uplifter is more group focused. So Uplifter, we work on total health. So the HIIT mm -hmm. classes are free. You know, we work on our physical fitness. But Uplifter, we get to talk. We get to, so we pick a book every single month. Um, it's no longer than 300 pages because we read 10 pages a day in like a 30 day, you know, month. Um, and then we meet every Sunday evening. We discuss a book. We discuss our emotions. We discuss, you know, discuss connections, how it made us feel. Um, and then and during the week, I provide meal plans and grocery lists. Oh. Um, yep. And you have a community where you can talk and chat with everybody in the community all week long. You can share your progress. I have journal prompts. I have calendar prompts. So sometimes I'll do, um, well, not sometimes, every time, but we have like a 30-day calendar. It'll say different things like declutter your desk, go outside and look at the sky, you know, I different little that. things that will help. Yeah. Your emotional, you know, healing and wellness. Cause a lot of us women, I mean, women more so than men uh, want to work on their emotional health as well as sometimes they just don't know where to start. And I find that it's easier to work in a group setting because we can relate. I mean, someone could say something and then another person be like, Oh my gosh, me too. You know? So um, I have a lot of moms in there, a lot of, um, you know, career women, different types of women, but it's really fun. So uplift, is a totally different program it's 30 days you can join you know one month drop off another month whatever the case may be I have people who have done it back to back six months I have people who have done it you know every other month stuff like that so I love Uplifter it has uh, gotten amazing results not only physically but emotionally people leave there feeling like okay I can do this I can have a healthier routine I can have healthier habits I can you know go out and live my life and you know uh, deal with the things that are coming at me because of the routine that I have you know produced now so it's really fun. Yeah. And then it yeah. sounds really good for stay at home moms because oh gosh, um, yes. majority of you all are listening are stay at home yeah. moms. And yeah. it gets lonely sometimes. It oh gets lonely. Yeah. You know what to talk to that yeah. understands you may see someone climbing on my back in the background. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. The community is awesome. And, you know, you just meet so many different women from all over. I mean, we've had people from New York, from, from Florida, from California. I mean, it's open to anyone wherever you are because it's virtual. And some people have even met up together because they find out that they're in the same city. So they kind of get that I friendship. Yeah. That. yeah, that's the goal. I just want people to have that accountability because once you have accountability, I feel like we don't have enough accountability. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, if you have that accountability and you're talking to someone and be like, you know what, these are my goals at the beginning of the month. And then it, it could be crickets because nobody's holding you accountable. But when you're in a group setting, they're like, hey, Nayara, what happened to what you said, you know, that you were going to do on so-and-so date? Like, what happened to this? Like, what are we doing? Let's do this, you know? So it really uplifts you. And that's why I called it Uplift Her um, to do better and to just work on your health. Yeah, overall. I love that name. Yeah. So if I'm a busy stay-at-home mom, yeah. first of all, we both have three kids. So... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> busy stay at home moms what does a program look like for her as far as like the um is it like um will it make me feel like i'm required or like the pressure of having to do so much because we already have so much on our plate right yeah no it's self-paced it's basically just having you look at your life and adjust your routine according to how you want it to go. You know? okay. So let's say like, hey, you know what? My focus is I really want to lose some weight. I'm not feeling good about myself. Like I know that I'm beautiful. I know that, you know, it's not about the weight, but I just know that I could be healthier. I know I can make better decisions. Boom. You're in the program. You're going to be around those same people who want to make those type of decisions. You're going to be reading. You're going to reading is going to help with your personal development and your focus. You're going to be working out. You know, you don't have to do workouts every single, you know, whatever, uh, every single week or every single day, okay. but you will post in the chat, you know, Hey, I went on a walk today or I did a stretch today or I did this okay. or I did a video. Yeah. You have those options. Um, it's again, it's really just the accountability. And once you see that app going off, it may you feel like you know what let me get up and do something because everybody yeah. is doing something you know so it's kind of like a you know like a bell that goes off and like i see these other women doing it i can do it too so it's just a that's beautiful motivator. reminder yeah that's, yeah that's it's really not motivated. it's not harsh at all it's not stressful like whatever pace wherever you are like we meet you where you are you know the whole point is to just elevate you to the, the level that you want to be on yeah and it yeah. sounds like it's tailored to all like you said all different moms and all, all um lifestyles yep all, I moms, love that. all types of women yep doesn't matter because we need we need that support like i said it gets lonely and not only does it get lonely it's hard it's cooking so a meal for your family every oh day my, <laughs> oh my gosh yeah that's where the meal plan comes in too because it's you know kid friendly too um you know the same things that you're eating you can try it with with your kids as well my kids mm -hmm. love it um of course like there's some things where there's like eh, like, i don't want to try that vegetable i'm not doing that you know but at least they tried it you know i always get yeah. them to just try something you never know like my child oh my gosh for the she would not eat carrots for like Maybe three years. <laughs> Maybe three years. Finally, the other day, she ate a carrot. She's like, this is good. I was like, oh. <laughs> I've, I've been saying this for how many years? <laughs> how many years? I've been trying to sneak it in. And she was just like, yeah, you know, it's not bad. They're eating salads now. So, you know, Ooh. once you, you know, yeah, you get going, you know, your kids start to kind of mimic and see that behavior. Like, it's really important just to try it. Try it in front of them. You know, you don't have to force it. But, yeah, it's family friendly. So they have a meal guide they can um, that they can follow themselves. They have a grocery list and they will have um, a tracker too. all that good stuff. Yeah. I love that. So you make it simple to where I don't Super have to simple. plan my meals. No, nope. and then you know I don't have to write out what day. I need from the grocery store. You already did it. Yeah, <laughs> right there is a mental relief. With this. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so so fun because then you get to see you're like, okay, this one I'm gonna have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we work on meal prep. Like you don't have to meal prep, but I always encourage it because again, as busy moms, like if we could just take one day and I cook at least two three meals, even if it's just for ourselves, a couple days ahead we are, we're winning, you know, because we could just pop yeah. that in the microwave and we can eat and we can stay on pace rather than, you know, I used to call myself the garbage can. When my kids didn't eat something, I would eat their food. <laughs> I would just finish it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, I'm going to have my meals. This is mommy's meals and I'm good. So, yeah. I, listen, I can relate because it's like, you know, you, some days you eat all your food, some days you don't. And right. I just sit on the table and as I'm cleaning the table off, yeah. I'm just eating right away. So it, it helps that, 
we have these healthy meal plans. Yes, <laughs> because... exactly. You're like, you know what? I don't need this. I'm good. I had my food. I'm fine. <laughs> yes, and I love that it's kid friendly because, like you said, um, your kids cook with you. My kids cook yep. with me as well, and yes. it makes it easier for me if they're included because it kind of uh, gives them a sense of ownership. So yes. where now they want to eat it because yep. I took the time to prepare this, so exactly. they're more likely to eat it when they're included. Yep in the exactly. process exactly yeah and that takes time that we recently started doing that i would say like two three years you know as they got a little bit older like they would play and stuff like that in the kitchen but now that my son's going to be 12 like he's making eggs he's doing you know the different things like he's actually like knowing what he wants to have and then i would just kind of guide him on like all right let's add this let's try this salad or let's try this green maybe that'll, maybe that'll spice it up that'll work you know how we you know get our kids to yeah. do things yeah so um yeah having them incorporate cooking with you or just even prepare Preparing the meal is a big win. Like it will help. Yeah. That's how I got my little ones to eat a little bit more vegetables because they love cutting. So yes. I oh, yeah. like the peppers, cut carrots and stuff like that. But my four-year-old, so my <laughs> daughter was born a creative. Like she has a creative spirit. She makes <laughs> stuff, nails, all that stuff. Yes. My four-year-old was born a chef. He <laughs> gotcha. is naturally a chef. So uh, he, if he wasn't four, I would fully let him cook the eggs by himself. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> my, if you catch my story sometimes, and yeah. some people know listening, he makes his own eggs. Like, That's so I, funny. I just yeah. turn the stove on for him. Uh, that you know. gives you hope, though. Eventually, one day you're not even going to have to, you know, do breakfast. He's going to just do it himself. <laughs> oh, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, are you um, there? They, they yeah. the waffles. They're doing so, the toast. <laughs> so, listen, my household is is different. I wish they would pop it in a toaster. So they like, used to, um, maybe for like two months, but now it's like homemade waffles. Oh, so, they, so they're using the machines. Uh, I got you. We have a mini waffle maker, waffle maker, and they are making the waffles in there. So I like <laughs> it because they're cooking, and I don't cook on Sunday mornings. They cook. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah, they cook. They Ooh, cook. I gotta get up on that. They're not. They're not cooking independently now. Oh man. I, I, I sit at the table and they, they cook. Uh, I mean, they're using like that air fryer and a waffle maker. They're not necessarily using the fire right. on the stove. Yeah. Um, but yes, they, they, they wear the air fryer and their waffle maker out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so good. Look at that. That's a win. That's a huge win. It is. It is. And then with your meal planning and stuff like that, that would make it easier for a busy mom because yeah. Like you said, you cook the meals. So do you guide your moms through? Um, yeah, we go over it. So once they, yeah, once they join, um, we have an intro, intro call. So we go over the what we're going to be reading, the meal guide, how we're going to prepare. So we go over everything, everything that they okay. might need help with and the grocery um, on the grocery list. And they could, of course, alternate like, you know, depending on if they don't eat a certain type of food, I give all, you know, alternate um, options. So yeah, it's very simple, very straightforward. Um, and then we have one day on the meal guide that is a creative day where they can create their own meal mm -hmm. and they can share it in the chat. That way we can have recipes kind of rotating around and people are like, oh, I like that or that was cool, you know. So they can save that for themselves. I like that because yeah. some moms don't know how to meal prep, but meal prep would actually help a lot, especially if they have soccer practice, chilling, yeah. whatever it is, go. the kids going. Yes, and you get home eight o'clock at night trying to figure out what are you going to cook for dinner, and you've already yeah. been going for like twelve hours by now. Right. Yep. I even have like a fast food guide where it's just like if you absolutely have to, here's something that's better that you can get at Chick Fil A or something that better. Oh you can get wow! At yeah. Just so like, and again, like I don't hinder anyone from eating certain things. Like you know, every once in a while we will have pizza, we will have fast food. Um, but the focus is healthy balance. So if you happen to be mm -hmm. out and be like, listen, I have to take these kids to Wendy's, or I'm going to lose my mind because I've been in there probably once a month <laughs> um you know i give some different options where you can get something like a wrap rather than a burger you know don't get the soda get oh the my water, gosh so. yeah i love like that, that just to remind you that you know what there's healthy options everywhere we just have to look for them yeah because some some wellness coaches i'm not gonna lie like we we shy away from them yeah. um because wendy's is quicker on the way home than me yeah. getting home they're tired they're cranky and i'm trying to yeah. hurry up and cook a, you know cook yeah. a meal for them yeah so i I love yeah, and then that. you feel bad sometimes, like in other programs where you're like, oh man, if I ate off a quarter, and that's the one thing about accountability. Like some people will go in there and they're like, you know what? I had a burger today or I had, um, you know, tacos and fries. Like 
I didn't feel good about that, but I'm going to reset, you know, like we come on there and we talk about it and we, you know, you know, get behind them and let them know that it's okay that they made those choices. And we let them know that you don't have to wait for the next week to reset. You could just start where you are. So it's amazing. I love that. I love yeah. that. That, that. That helps a lot of moms. Um, yeah. Whoo, that helps a lot. No of mom moms. guilt, no mom shame. Right. That's what, that's what I was yeah. going to get into. It sounds like it's a no mom guilt program. Yep. I mean, you, you have three little ones. You're at home. Um, which majority of my audience is at home. Your kids are yeah. older, but mm -hmm. it's still life. Life gets to life. And so yes. I like that you. <laughs> yes. Give yourself grace. You know, the, the, the health journey and the, the journey to becoming better is progressive. It's never final, you know? So you always have to just continue to move forward. Like don't wait for the next, like, you know, I, when they say I mess up, like, Oh, I messed up on my meal plan. You know, I used to be that type of person where I'm like, all right, cool. I'll just start next week. Like it's whatever. I'll just eat bad for the rest of the week. No, the next, the very next moment, that next meal, that next bite is when you start again. And that's what kind of creates those habits. You know, everything is about healthy habits. Like the key to a better you is a, you know, having better, ha better habits in your life. So that's what I teach teach and that's what I you know encourage moms and women to do because it's those little things that add up and before you know you're, you're fitting better in different things you're walking different you know you're you're breathing better you're feeling better about yourself so it really does help it's a blessing and the kids see the difference because oh what you yes. said one they see that you made a mistake and that you're still working towards it like I had a bad habit with Mountain Dew so yeah. I said I was gonna like it was it was really bad. It was like mm -hmm. two a day because I'm thinking I need this caffeine right. to survive. Today. Right. Yeah, this day. Yeah. <laughs> to survive the day. And I told my kids, like, okay, um, I think it was December twenty seventh. I'm no longer drinking Mountain Dews. So yeah. I kind of weaned myself off of it. And they kind of walked me through the process. I said I was no longer drinking them as much. So now I will have like one, maybe one every two weeks or once right. a month. That's um, progress. That's huge. Right. So they yeah. they see that mommy has it, but she's cut back on it to balance with the with balance. the healthiness. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, uh, Everything is balanced, especially for kids. You never want to like cold turkey do things because again, that kind of throws them off too. It's like, oh well, I can't do this, or you know, if I did this, I'm a bad kid, or I I didn't make the right choice. Like, no, it's about balance. You know, too much of anything is not good, but you know, throwing yourself off completely is even worse. You know, so yeah, and even perfect. the the good foods like eating mm -hmm. too much of it is not good for your yeah. body as well so right. it's really truly a balance and the kids are watching this so so they see that and yeah. the other thing that you said as far as it's okay to make a mistake get back up keep mm -hmm. going yeah like keep keep going like Literally. okay i messed up right here with yeah. my goal but yeah you know i got yeah. back on track with the next meal exactly yeah it's a life lesson and a health lesson all in one like just get the very next moment you make a better choice and that's it you don't beat I, yourself up yeah i love that i yeah. i absolutely love that okay so for a mom listening how can she get into your program because it sounds sure. it sounds amazing i love anything yeah. that's not mom shaming and that supporting yes. moms and all of that Thank you so much. Yeah, so they can go to my website. So it's Noav Wellness. So it's N-O-A-V wellness.com. Um, they can check me out. They can read about me. They can follow me on social media and, you know, just to get to, you know, know, like, and trust. And then they can enter anytime, ask any questions. As soon as they um, add it to their card, they're automatically um, added into the community group. They get their resources. They get their meal guide. Um, the I also give the book sometimes generally for free digitally um, if okay. they don't want to, you know, purchase it themselves otherwise some, they typically like you know hardcover books themselves as well um but yeah so they'll get the book they go all the resources so noavwellness.com and then that's how you can join so i hope to see some of the ladies in there be i'm awesome. excited i hope you all join as well so what um so i'm sorry i had a um question mm -hmm. with what books do you all read like where are some of the books you provide in your yeah. uh, program so we usually have themes. Um, it really depends. Um, like the last one that we read was Five Second Rule. Um, we read Atomic Hop. Like we, it's always uplifting, you know, books that will kind of help us with our personal development, our emotional development. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always geared towards that. Um, I don't know the one that we're going to have for June. It's already, it's going to be listed um, ahead of time. But yeah, everything that we do is always going to be um, for our personal and emotional wellness. That's the goal. Um, because if we work on that first, we're able to kind of take care of everything else. It trickles 
down to our physical, it trickles down to our decisions and our goals. So yeah, all of our books, personal developed and um, emotional health. I love that, especially yes. Atomic Habits. That's one of my favorite books. That's and that's a book. a book that you reread. <laughs> yeah, quarterly. Yeah, for sure. It's really, really yeah. good multiple times i love yeah. that i love that yeah. so make sure you all go to no wellness.com i put it here and i'll make sure that i put it below in the comments so that you can just click the link and head over to her website and sign up um a wellness coach you know usually has a stigma but this program sounds amazing uplift her it's in yes. the name yes. so please make sure you all check out christina so yes. um before we uh and I usually have a question that I like to ask my guests. Okay. So for the mom that's in that dark space, yeah. um, the mom that's listening and she's listening, she's confused on life. Uh, mm -hmm. She doesn't, she doesn't know how to get out of whatever it is that she's going through. What do you have for her? What do you say to her? Oh, man, I've been that mom. So I could talk to myself. <laughs> um, I would say to her, um, you're stronger than you think. You know, mm -hmm. you have survived 100% of the hardest days of your life. This is not the end. Um, every opportunity, every moment that you wake up is an opportunity to do better. And all you are one decision away from a better life. So don't let anything, anyone, any situation, any circumstance let you feel like this is the last of it. Um, get back up. Just like we teach our kids, if you make a mistake, get back up in that very next moment. Don't stay down. Don't don't wait till next week, next month. Start in that very next moment. Mm -hmm. um, those little habits, the healthy habits that I talk about that saved my life, literally changed my life. And it could change your life too. You could start with one thing. Hey, I drink too much soda. Let's drink some water. One today. Let's see what happens. You know what? I binge eat a lot. I was an emotional eater. Let's see what's bothering me. Look inside. Have a conversation with yourself. Tell yourself like, you know what? I'm going to get out of this. I'm not going to be in this place forever. I know that something's bothering me internally. I know that I'm overeating for a reason, and but I'm going to get out of it. And I'm going to make a healthy choice, whether it's one at a time or just, you know, cold jerky. So to that mom, I got your back. I'm here if you need me, but don't stay down. Get back up. I love that. Get back up one back little up. step at a time. Yes. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Christina, for joining me today. My this pleasure. Was a very valuable episode, not just for me, but for that mom that's, yes. like I said, she's feeling confused. She probably just had a baby and she's oh, just yeah. going through it mentally. You know, we can go on and on with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a lot there, but yeah. um, please reach out if, to Christina. If you don't reach out to Christina, then reach out to someone for that help. Yeah. But the Uplift Her program sounds amazing. And I know it is amazing. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you um, so much for having me. I appreciate it and appreciate all that you do. Keep on going. <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Don't give up. <laughs> we will. <laughs> yes. Amen. <laughs> but. Be sure to go to our YouTube and subscribe, yes. leave us feedback on this episode, and we'll see you all again next time.